What's up class and welcome to another lesson in the no mod shop class here on the school zone in today's lesson I'm going to be going over all the traps that were included in the vanilla game and some of the additional ones added by the DLC This is one of two lessons I'll post to help you guys out with the trap maze contest for those of you who are entering If you don't know what that is links to that video down below in the art card above check it out You might have some fun with it Especially this time since I'm allowing mods and if you're not planning on entering the contest It's still some valuable information on how to protect your settlements. So, as always, you know, veteran builders might find a few nuggets of gold in these types of videos. So have a watch all the way through and feel free to add any of your own ideas down in the after school club below. Oh, and before we begin, the bear naming ceremony. I put up a poll in my last video on what we should name the sanctuary bear based on suggestions from the pet cage video. So here were the results. It was surprisingly close, actually, but Bear Claw won out. So I therefore dub the bear claw. <laughs> so now we have dog meat, cat meat, and bear claw. That's classic. <laughs> What's up, buddy? So, you know, I just realized something else I forgot to mention in the last video. The type of creature that you summon, not just the species, is going to depend on your level. So, for example, this type of Yao Guai is a shaggy Yao Guai. I don't know what the other types are. There's like 10 of them and I don't have them memorized. But Bear Claw is a shaggy Yao Guai. I went ahead and disassembled the uh, bear cage trap because um, I think I only want one Yao Guai roaming around the settlement. If you have too many of the same type of creature, then other types of that creature will try to uh, invade your settlement more often. So we don't want to have like, you know hordes of bears attacking sanctuary. But uh, the other reason it makes a difference is because um, I mentioned that dogs, for example, don't need the beta wave emitter. This is the uh, beta wave emitter. It's got the Wi-Fi conduit attached to it. So there's one type of dog that doesn't need the beta wave emitter, and that's the junkyard dog. That's the kind of dog you want to go for. The other types of dogs that you might get are things like mongrels and... Uh, I don't know, just various types of mongrels, right? So you have a choice when you uh, use the dog cage. You can either put up a beta wave emitter and just have a, a mongrel as a pet, and you might get some cool kind of mongrels too. You know, they might be like glowing green mongrels and stuff or whatever, or albinos and stuff. But if you want a junkyard dog because you don't have the perks yet to get the beta wave emitter set up, then just save your game right before you open the cage or right before you... Um, turn off the power, you know, with the uh, switch. And if you don't get the junkyard dog, then you can just reload and wait till you get one. It's a process, but uh, I just wanted to make that clear. But in other scenarios, it might be actually to your advantage. For example, with death claws, you might end up with like, you know, some kind of mutant, you know, mystic glowing death claw or something. <laughs> Once again, I don't have all the types memorized, but uh, the higher level, the more chance you have to get a more advanced version of that creature. So I just wanted to make that clear real quick. Okay, so on to the traps. I'm going to go ahead and uh, go into build mode here. And as you probably already know, traps are going to be in the defense section. And you have these three types of defenses. We're going to focus on traps because of the trap maze contest. So the first type of trap you have here is the Tesla Arc. And uh, you could do some cool things with this. In fact, I have a video where I made a Tesla coil. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I'll link that down below. But I'm going to go ahead and set this up here. And now, if I directly wire this Tesla arc up to power, it's going to start the process, the electrocution process immediately. So what I'm going to do is I could just hook it up to this uh, switched power pylon, but I'm actually going to go into power connectors and switches and get out another type of item that you're probably going to want to use at least at some point in your trap maze and that's the pressure plate okay so i'm going to hook the pressure plate up to the tesla arc and i'm going to hook the uh pressure plate also up to this uh nope i want it right there okay so Power is coming from this Wi-Fi conduit, which you can just assume in other scenarios could just be your generator. I'm just skipping the whole generator process because I've already hooked this up to the generator using the Wi-Fi glitch. And now we've got a live pressure plate that's hooked up to the Tesla trap. Guys, okay, so let me scoot this Tesla trap way over here. 
Uh, I guess there's a limit because of the wiring. Okay, we don't want to get electrocuted. Okay, so now when I step on this pressure plate, I can step right back off of it and it's going to keep going. All right, let's see if that's the case. Yep. I don't need to keep standing on it. So they only need to trigger it once and it's going to shock them. It's going to do all kinds of cool things. Now, in the next video, I'm actually going to be going over some cool ways you can set up these traps among a bunch of other neat little tidbits. But uh, in this case, we have it set on the ground. All right, so now at this point, unfortunately, I can only either repair it or scrap it. All right, I'm wondering if I repair it, if I can store it. Let me, let me try to repair it. And then, oh, I can. Good. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and store this now. All right. That seems like a more efficient use of resources. And uh, we're going to go back into defense, down to traps. And the next item we have here is the trap door. Now this one, as you can see from the icon above it, was uh, added with Wasteland Workshop. And this isn't going to really be set on the ground. This is going to be a scenario where you're going to have a higher level Actually, I just thought of a scenario where you would have it on the ground, but I'll get to that in a second. But uh, they'll be walking on a higher level, a second story, and they'll fall through that trap door onto perhaps some spikes or something, you know? Like we have these right here. I'll get to that in a second. The thing I just remembered was in, in my last miscellaneous tips video, I mentioned that NPCs might not be so proactive in walking across a trap door floor because uh, it kind of messes up the pathing, okay? So I just want to mention that you could still add these things to your trap maze even if the NPCs can't walk over them because if you remember from my trap maze contest, one of the things that I made an important emphasis is, is that the running of the humanoid through the trap maze is not going to be the big determinant of the winner of the contest. The, the big emphasis was supposed to be on the design and the execution, you know, the creativity, the design and the execution of your trap maze, okay? So if you make it look really cool and the NPCs don't really run through and do it properly, that's okay. That's okay. We can imagine it in our minds, and you, you'll have a, a good chance of winning, okay? Another thing I forgot in my pet cage video I kept sleeping was, is that I had already set up a firework mortar down here, down the hill over here. It was just out of sight, out of mind, and so I was resting, and when uh, I could have just been launching this. Let me, see, let me make sure I have some uh, shells in there. Uh, I have one left. All right, so we're going to... Flip that on, flip that off, and then head back over while that shoots up and gets rid of this rain. Okay, so there we go. Nice. All right, so back into build mode. And the next trap that we have is the radiation emitter, okay? So this operates very similar to the Tesla arc, except it's just a, a one-shotter. We'll hook that up. And then I'm going to move this a little farther away. Okay. So when I step on this pressure plate now, it's going to shoot a burst of... I don't know. It's like a dirty bomb or whatever. All right. So let's check it out. And the closer you are to it, the more rads it's going to give you. All right. Now, I hate rads, so we got to go in and get rid of that. <laughs> just because I'm OCD about that stuff. So we can just eat some mutant hound chops. Okay. So that's interesting. And also, it's kind of cool because it looks like a, a neat looking sparkler shower uh, when it's a little bit darker. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and repair that and then store it. Okay. Next down the line. Let's see here. Okay. We have the flamethrower. This is always a fave. All right. So I'm going to set that up, hook it up.
There we go. Okay, so this is obviously in most cases going to be pointing at the person stepping on the pressure plate here, but uh, in this case, we'll just... And this is another scenario where you can just step on it and step off, and it's going to continue to uh, run its course until it runs out of fuel, and then you'll need to repair it. Okay, so one's probably not going to do a whole lot of damage, but if you have a, several of them set up, in like a hallway or something it can uh, do some damage so we're gonna repair that and this has good uses too see before I repaired it it was smoking I've used that in a lot of videos uh, to simulate smoke from other things like barbecues or from you know uh, campfires so this is another good thing to store and not waste the resources and then the next down the line, we have the powered spring trap. And as you can see from the icon above it, it's also going to be from Wasteland Workshop. All right. Now, this one is going to face this direction. And well, let me go ahead and turn this one around because it's not going to hurt us too bad. So you can see it when I step on it. And we're going to hook it up. There we go. Okay. This is... <laughs> setting up this pressure plate with the Wi-Fi glitch is going to look really nice. Because <laughs> that wire is just giving away the trap. But let's say the pressure plate is like right here. Or maybe somehow you manage to sink this down into the floor a little bit. You know, just giving you guys some clues here. And uh, I actually don't know if that'll disrupt it i'm just i haven't set this up yet but uh it is something interesting well actually you know what let's just do it while we're here see if it works okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pillar glitch this whole thing and just sink it down into the ground so you can kind of barely see it and Let's see if it still works. All right. It does. That's rad. <laughs> that's the bomb. That's awesome. Okay, so that's another little trick for you using uh, this item. And of course, if they can't see the wire, then uh, it'll be that much better. I'm going to set this over here in case we need to do it with the next one. And, ooh, this one looks like it can be stored, so it doesn't uh, break after you use it. In fact, it looks like it can be reset uh, on its own and used as many times as you want. That's awesome. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and store that one, and we're going to move on to the next trap. which I think is something similar. Yep, the spring trap. Okay, so this one doesn't need power. It's got a built-in uh, pressure plate right there. So I'm going to go ahead and step on it, step back. It still got me. <laughs> so uh, let's see how far down I can sink this with that pressure plate still working. I don't think it's going to be able to be sunk down very far. Because otherwise the pressure plate won't trigger. But let's give it a shot. Hey now. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to sink that down. Let's sink it down pretty far. And I don't think it's going to work. Alright, I could be wrong. Yep, that's what I thought. So the pressure plate on this one is actually a bounding box. That requires it to be at least somewhat visible. Let's try that. Okay, so the pressure plate can be slightly underground. Yeah, and still work. But it's a very short bounding box, so there you go. <laughs> That's pretty cool. All right. Set that aside, store that, and we're going to hit the next trap. 
which is the saw blade trap. Okay. So once again, this is probably most effective with a series of them down the line uh, that are all triggered at the same time, so they're, or maybe at various times, so they're moving at different speeds. But uh, as soon as we hook this up to power, then we can use the um, pressure plate to trigger it. And I step on this. I can step off again. Ooh, this one. Okay, so I'm glad I did that. All right, so this one, you have to stay on the pressure plate for it to... That's fascinating. Hmm. It's got me thinking of cool ideas where you might be able to, like, have multiple saw blades. Uh, let me just try something real quick. <laughs> that is fascinating. I never thought of that before. Okay, so you could have a bunch of them, man, and there's no way they're getting through that without getting uh, sawed to death. But, unfortunately, this one's going to have to be hooked up to um, a uh, direct power source to stay on, or maybe some creative use of... Uh, the logic gates and uh, maybe the delayed off switch or something. But um, anyway, there you go. That is pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and, and once again, these don't get uh, permanently damaged. So you can store these with no problems. And the next item we have is the spike trap. So I'm going to go ahead and sink that down so we can at least see it. And uh, this is, you know, people are going to walk over this. I'm going to get damaged when I do. But it, is ha it has its own set of pressure plates built right into it. So as soon as you step on it, these uh, nasty <laughs> rusted metal sharp girders will spike out of it. But um, this can also be used, you know, for some falling damage as well. So they can fall from a trap door uh, onto these spikes. And uh, these might even be able to be... Let me get into workshop mode. Sunk a little bit to conceal them. Let's see if I can make this work. Uh, it doesn't want to... Uh, it takes some finagling, but it can be done. It's pretty cool. Let's see if it still works. Yep, it does. Nice. Oh, yeah. All right, so the way a good trap maze is going to work is that it's going to wear down the NPCs through a test of attrition, you know? Like, there's not one single trap that's going to completely take them out. It's going to wear them down, wear them down, wear them down, and <laughs> just see which ones are the strongest to make it through, you know? But once again, I just want to emphasize that the design of your trap maze is the most important thing, okay? Not whether the NPC can make it through or not. That's just kind of like a fun bonus round. So, uh, if the NPCs don't make it past the first two rooms, or areas, or sections, or whatever you have going on, uh, that's fine, you know? Or if they make it all the way through and survive, you know? But it's still a fun run, you know? It's just all for the entertainment value. Okay, so that is pretty cool. Let's go ahead and get rid of that, and see what we have left. Okay, so we have these, uh, stationary guns. This one is a paintball gun, and this one is an actual ballistic gun, or a pipe gun, it says up in the description. So, most likely, if you want to do damage, you're going to be using the stationary gun. <laughs> but if you want to scare people, you can have a bunch of um, paint guns all set up, you know. As a matter of fact, in the trap maze video, I did mention that you can make these traps family-friendly, you know. If you just wanted to have, like, a fun, you know, arcade-type <laughs> design... That's not going to kill the NPCs, but just uh, scare them to death, uh, like the Home Alone house, you know. Then um, the paintball gun could be fun. But um, let's go ahead and go with the stationary gun for this example. And I'm going to hook it up to the pressure plate once again. Otherwise, it'll start shooting immediately. And um, 
yeah, just for the fun of it, let's see if we can sink this in the ground. Yeah, take out their knees, right? <laughs> let's aim it at myself a little bit better. That looks about right. Ooh. You can go down pretty far, actually. That's, that's dope. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and step on this. And it's going to start firing. And it continues to fire after I step off the pressure plate. So that's good to know. Now, once again, like the flamethrower, a single one of these isn't going to do much. But a series of them could be pretty cool. Could do quite a bit, actually. You have to run through a hallway with a whole bunch of these firing. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to guess this one also needs to be repaired. Yeah. All right, so I'll go ahead and repair it and store it. Okay, and I think that was the last one. Yeah, okay, so that's the last one of the basic items in your building menu that are labeled as traps. Now, there are other things that can be used as traps, but I'm going to go over that actually in the next video. All right, so that's going to do it for this video. As I mentioned in the sequel to this video, which I'll post very soon, I'll show you guys better ways to rig up these traps and also some cool ways to use other objects as traps or, you know, part of the trap maze experience like lures or drops or gauntlets and other neat tricks. So be sure you subscribe to these videos so you'll know when they drop and throw a like on the video for good measure. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Happy trap maze building and class dismissed.